air conditioners allow us to become climate engineers. When the air is too hot and the humidity too high and natural ventilation and the ceiling fan can't give us the comfort, then naturally we turn to the air conditioner to give us comfort. A necessary evil we cannot do without because it guzzles electricity produced by fossil fuels. So what do we have to do? We have to use the air conditioner as efficiently as possible. In this episode of New Vastu, I'm going to give you a few tips on what you must do to use your air conditioner most efficiently. Well, let's start with the windows. When the air conditioner is switched on, the windows must be closed and closed tight. The very heat and humidity that the air conditioner is working hard to remove from your room cannot be allowed to keep pouring into the room. Remember, the window or the door opening to the outside is the most porous or leaky connection between the outside and the inside. Apart from being insulated, the window should close tight. And the same principle will apply for winter when it is so cold that you need to use the electric heater or a fireplace. Before I get into the nitty-gritty of designing a home for air conditioning, let me digress a bit. There are other devices available to us which consume less electricity. And if I were to grade them, the most basic is of course the ceiling fan. Then comes the evaporative cooler and last of all, the air conditioner. Keeping this principle in mind, in warm climates, we find the breeze to be comforting when the air temperature is below our skin temperature or less than 32 degrees centigrade. What we discover is that when the air temperature goes above 26 degrees centigrade, we like a gentle breeze. But when the breeze is cooler than that, it is no longer pleasant. It becomes a chilling draft, which we would avoid. On the other hand, if the air is already humid and won't evaporate moisture from the skin, even 28 degrees centigrade begins to feel uncomfortable. We start sweating. That is when we resort to air conditioning. When the air is dry, we can get comfort under a fan at higher temperatures, up to 32 degrees centigrade. When the air is humid, like on a muggy afternoon in Chennai, we will feel discomfort at 27 degrees centigrade, even under a fan. Let us look at the evaporative cooler first. Surya as the drying heat, Vayu as flowing air, and Jal as moisture, they all play a combined role in making the cooler work. It is summer and the air has been heated by the action of the sun and the air is dry. It carries little water vapor. When this air passes over a moist surface, the water on the moist surface evaporates into the drier airstream. In the process of evaporation, it absorbs the heat from the airstream and brings down the temperature of the air. The air passing over the moist or wet cooling pad cools down. All you need to do is to place a moist or wet surface and make dry air flow over it. The cooling happens automatically. Did you know that before the days of electricity, the Vastu experts of Iran used cooling towers with wet charcoal through which the prevailing breeze would blow through and be brought down through the towers into the heart of the house to cool the house down. Similarly, the Vastu experts of North and Central India use mats made of the aromatic roots of the khas plant used to wet them so that the hot summer wind would blow through them and cool down and cool the space beyond. In today's desert or evaporative coolers that are now commercially available, a small electric pump and an electric fan do the work of wetting the cooling pads and drawing the air over them. Only a little bit of electricity is used to wet the wetting pads of the cooler and to run the fan that pulls the dry air through the wetting pad and then push it into the room. This lets a cool breeze blow over our skin that produces a surprising amount of comfort. You might be using 150 watts of electricity to make a room of 150 square feet reasonably comfortable. That is just one watt per square foot. Evaporative cooling will happen only when dry air is pulled over the wet pad of the cooler. That is why coolers are installed either on the outside window or on the outside wall. On the other hand, 
if you place the cooler inside your room, after a while you'll find it becomes less effective. In fact, after some time, you'll positively feel stuffy. This is because the air that is getting moist with the cooler is returning back to the cooler and after a while, there's no more cooling happening. The most effective way of installing an evaporative cooler is to fix it into an external wall. It is advisable to keep it under shade so that the body of the cooler does not heat up in the direct sun. Open a window on the opposite side of the room so that the cool air flushes through the room, cooling the room before it goes out. And switch on the ceiling fan to enhance the cooling effect. Over a period of time, the floor, the walls, and the ceiling of the room being cooled will also absorb cooled from the cool air. Now we have Vayu, the air that flows through the room, Jal, the water that evaporates to cool the air down, and Prithvi, the materials of the building that absorb the cooled and store it, all together to give us comfort. This is what new Vastu is about. The next tip that I'm going to give you is very important, so listen carefully. When the outside air is dry, a cooler would bring down the air temperature by 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. When the outside air temperature is, let's say, 43 degrees Celsius on a May afternoon, the temperature of the air being blown by the cooler may be 33 degrees Celsius. And if that is not cool enough, then what do you do? Well, the trick is to switch off the cooler when the air feels warm. Run the cooler during the cooler times of the day when the outside temperature is below 40 degrees Celsius and at night. When, at night, the outside air temperature drops to, say, 36 degrees Celsius, the cooler's air will be about 28 degrees Celsius. It'll get cooler through the night. The cooled will get stored in the structure of the building through the night. And during the hottest part of the day, switch off the cooler, keep the hot air out and the windows well shaded, and feel the cools of the surrounding surfaces. But evaporative cooling will work only when there is little moisture in the air. It will not work in the pre-monsoon months and during the monsoon season because there cannot be sufficient evaporation. So when the temperature is high and the humidity is high, this is when air conditioning becomes the only available option.